Have you ever wondered why your stats increase when you level up in Elden Ring? Have you wondered how damage is calculated? I bet you have. Um, okay, maybe you haven't, but that is exactly why I am bringing you this video. This video and the next one on soft caps are important precursors of some basic information that you need to know before I move on to optimizing the different weapons, since unlike staffs and seals, their scaling can be changed. In the bottom right of your status page, you see your defensive attributes, but these attributes can be quite confusing. You see, for resistances, the right side shows how much resistance you're getting from your armor, while the left side shows you your total resistance. But it doesn't work the same way for defense and damage negation. In fact, your defense and damage negation aren't even tied to each other. Your negation is tied to your armor, while your stats and levels increases your defense. Negation or absorption is multiplicative, while defense is a flat damage reduction. Let's start with the armor first, because I think you're wondering what multiplicative means for negation right now. I'm going to use the veteran's chest piece as an example. On the left, we see the negation attributes it grants you. The values are split into two types, four types of physical and four types of magical. It can sound confusing because you would think versus strike slash pierce are all physical negation, but why is there still a physical category? This physical category encompasses any physical attack that doesn't fall into one of these three categories. Here, you see that the amount of negation you get for your character is exactly the amount the armor states. For example, you take 100 physical damage from an attack without any armor on. With a veteran's armor on, you would be taking 81.3 points of physical damage because it reduces damage taken by 18.7%. Next, let's take a look at a different piece. I'll keep using the veteran set here with the veteran's helm. Similarly, we should be expecting 93.2 points of damage taken. But what happens if we wear both the veteran's helm and the veteran's armor? If we add 6.8 to 18.7, we get 25.5. Are the two pieces of equipment going to negate 25.5% of the damage taken? We can see from the character planner it doesn't work that way. 24.228 is less than 25.5. Why is this the case? That is because negation stacks multiplicatively. Recall the veteran's armor reduces damage to 81.3 points. Now the veteran's helm further reduces 81.3 by 6.8%. Doing the math, we get 75.772 damage taken. If we were originally going to take 100 points of damage, it is now reduced by 24.228%. Doesn't that number look familiar? Yeah. You probably already know being wet or walking in a body of water reduces your lightning negation by 10% and increases your fire negation by 10%. However, what you probably didn't know is they also stack multiplicatively. So, if you're wet and walking in the rain, your lightning negation is reduced by 19%, while your fire negation is increased by 21%. Because negation is hard to come by, talismans like the Scorpion Charm or the Radagon Sword Seal is actually a large trade-off to consider, especially in PvP. For meta levels 125 and anything above that, I really don't suggest running the Sword Seals because it'll do more harm than good. You rather have less stats, whatever the stat is. If you're finding the video helpful so far, please like and subscribe. Okay, now that we have the difficult part out of the way, let's check what stats we're actually getting out of leveling up and the 8 attributes. We will be using a Rudge as our base class, so it is easier to see. Keep your eye on the defense and resistance section. If we pump 50 Vigor into our Rudge to level him up 50 times, these are the new stats. Taking the difference, we have 20 points of difference in all defense stats except fire, which went up by 73 points. Robustness, focus, and vitality went up by 10 points, while immunity went up by 50. But we have to keep in mind, just leveling a character 50 times already gives us stats. Reaching 51 from level 1 gives us these stats. These stats aren't linear though, so the next 50 levels don't look like this. Anyway, we discover that Vigor itself gives us 53 fire defense and 40 immunity, which is 1.06 and 0.8 per level respectively. 
there is actually a curve here on defense too. You aren't actually getting exactly this amount of fire defense and immunity per level. But I am going to present it in this format because it gives a general idea. If we repeat the experiment for mine here, we can see the major difference comes from focus. Subtracting the bonus we get from the first 50 level ups, we get 40 focus or 0.8 focus per mind. Repeating this for endurance and the major difference comes from robustness. 40 robustness translates to 0.8 robustness per endurance. For strength, we see that all physical defense stats went up by 46 points. Essentially, we're getting 0.52 points per physical defense stat per point of strength. Now, if you read the description of dexterity before, you will see that it provides no bonuses to defense or resistances. Indeed, it doesn't, but it clearly shows you the stats you'll be getting for just leveling up. Upgrading intelligence gives us 60 magic defense instead of 20, which is 0.8 magic defense per level. Faith, like dexterity, does not give any bonuses. As for arcane, it gives 40 holy defense and 30 vitality putting it at 0.8 Holy Defense and 0.6 Vitality per point of Arcane. Okay, so from what we can see, the stat point investment themselves don't actually give a whole lot of stats. Yes, attribute points also perform other functions like weapon scaling, but in terms of defense and resistances, your biggest source is leveling. Remember I said the level bonus is on a curve? Let us take a look at more relevant PvP levels, which also correspond to endgame PvE content. These are the stats from leveling everyone gets at level 125. Compared to level 1, we see a significant difference. You also see the resistances catch up to the defense bonuses. The weird numbers here and there is only because of the level we stop at. Level 126 gives us one more point of fire resistance, while level 127 gives us one more point in all physical defense. The big takeaway here is at level 125, you're getting a bonus to all stats about evenly. The same thing happens for 150. All the stats are just a tad bit higher, but you're pretty much getting it evenly. So what exactly is the difference between defense and negation, and how exactly do they work together? Negation reduces the damage you take by a percentage, and then defense reduces it by a flat value. As for how exactly the flat value works, well... That is a bit complicated. Just think of it as a flat value. This is what we ended up in Dark Souls 3. I know it's a different game, but the stats seem to work along the same lines. So even if the formula might be different, you should get a general idea. Really, just think of it as a flat damage reduction. Okay, that was a lot of information about damage calculation for not a lot of practical use for the average player. But it certainly is important to explain the underlying mechanics first in order to discuss split scaling and stat skew. Next, I'm going to use the Knight Rider Glaive as an illustration to my point, because it is one of the few weapons that scale to S in strength when heavy infused. We will be comparing it to the fire infused version, which has its damage split into physical and fire with only a B scaling in strength. Using a weapon damage calculator at the 80 point strength mark, the Knight Rider Glaive has 720 AR. However, even with the weaker B scaling, we are still getting 769 AR with the fire infusion. Even an S rated strength scaling weapon cannot beat the fire counterpart. Does that mean the fire version is straight up stronger because it has higher attack rating? The answer is no. Let us recall the damage calculation formula. Let's say the glaive does slash damage. We first reduce the slash damage by the target slash negation and then reduce it by a flat amount from the defense. The fire version has two types of attack, aka split scaling. We need to reduce both of these attacks by their respective damage negation. So far, things are multiplicative, meaning if damage is only calculated by negation, fire infusion will indeed always be stronger. However, defense is the flat damage reduction component, and both of the attack types must be reduced by their respective flat defense. Assuming the target's fire defense and slash defense is the same, they have twice the amount of flat defense versus your attack. In fact, in most cases at 80 strength, the fire infused weapon will be weaker, but it still obviously depends on what you're hitting. Remember flat defense raises as your level increases? This makes the game favor single scaling the higher your level is. Some other key points I want to mention. 
First up, since Vigor is likely to be a highly invested stat, you should expect your fire defense and immunity to be particularly high. Lightning will almost always be your lowest defense because there is no way to buff it through stats. As you level up, your robustness will likely be high as well because you will invest in some endurance and heavier armor tends to have high robustness. Like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Krite, signing out.